All right. Anyways, moving on to guns. Cool. <laughs> All right. Well, should we, let's talk about guns. All right. So this time on the uh, Shooting the Bull with E Hunter podcast, uh, actually, I want to first. We had some pretty good results on our last one. Got a lot of people listening to that. Got some people uh, fired up on it on how to say coyote. Um, um. <laughs> Coyote. Uh, you know what's sad is I can't even say that anymore without thinking like, okay, how am I going to say this? Like, <laughs> it's it's never going to be the same, and I'm sure after tonight it's never going to be the same. Uh, it's still going to be the same after tonight. So, anyways, on this uh, on this podcast, we're going to talk a little bit about gun calibers and what is the best caliber of rifle for hunting. We all have our own different thoughts on this. Um, I can give you my thoughts, and we could end the podcast because my thoughts are correct. But I won't do that. So, um, not yet, anyway. <laughs> oh boy, In five minutes. You will. <laughs> Let's say, well, I won't. Curtis, let's start with you tonight, though. What is my favorite? Yours? Is the BB gun <laughs> all around? <laughs> so hey, how are we doing? The are first we doing gun? this big? We're doing this big game or just all around shooting grab. Oh, that's a good point. So I I posted it. Let me read exactly how I posted it in the poll so that we know where we are at here. Because that, that's a good point. Because I posted a thing on Instagram today about the best coyote uh, caliber slash round. I don't know if you guys saw the comments on that, but it was there's a wide variety there i think 22 250 223 224 220 swift those are the kind of your main ones someone put a, a 50 caliber on there and a three, 338 lapua but somebody did that online too um <laughs> so i wrote on our on the question i just wrote if you had one rifle caliber to hunt with what would it be and that's that's it i left it pretty open-ended so that's basically a anything that's got the range to shoot from a coyote up to whatever a, a grizzly or a moose whatever you want to put as your big game there so that's going to change my thinking See, a little bit because i've been thinking yeah. big game i think yeah that's mine too way way too many variables <laughs> um well i'm i'll be honest way too I many things it, to hunt yeah i posted it on mostly big game stuff so i'm, I'm assuming guys took it as a big game cartridge yeah, which is fine. I mean, that's that's something that I want to know too. Like, if people are hunting with the six five Creedmoor or six five PRC or the two eight four, or if they don't prefer that when they're hunting big game animals, so so that's totally fine. But then, on the other side of it, you got all the the uh, precision guys that are in competitions, you know. So they're obviously going to choose something different than maybe what they're going to hunt a bear with or a mel- an elk or a moose or whatever. So. I think there's just a lot of variables. And you, yeah, you got the variable of a predator hunter like myself, where you have to think of a fur friendly round and not a yep. seven mm going through a thirty pound coyote. You know, mm-hmm. shoot a shoot a uh, full metal jacket. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> one little hole. Yep. <laughs> That's a round I've never shot through my seven mag. <laughs> So let's. I think so, we got yeah, to kind of talk both. It's gonna be tough to kind of talk about it. Let's talk both then. Let's start. Yeah. Let's start with big game, and then maybe we'll kind of go into an all-around general. What is the best caliber? If you were to have one gun that does everything, what would that be? So let's start with big game. So Curtis, big game. What would what would be your one caliber for big game? So I just recently this year acquired a 6.5 PRC. But to be honest with you, I used it on on an antelope, and it did fantastic, and an elk, and it did great. I had to shoot it a couple of times, but that was probably based off of the shooter and not where, you know, placement, not, not the actual round that was used. But growing up, and my, you know, gun of choice was, to be honest, and Seth, you're going to like this, is the 270. Um, <laughs> that's what I used on everything. I'm I sorry. had one big game gun and that was it it was the 270 um 
because I know I could take the 270 on a moose hunt. I could take it on a bear hunt. I could take it, you know, on the bigger end of it, which the 6.5 PRC, you still probably could, but, you know, you're getting into, you know, some variables where it might not be big enough for those kind of animals. Obviously, if you hit it right, it's going to be good enough for anything. But, yeah. yeah, that's a hard one for me. I'd, I'd go right on those two, that PRC or the 270 uh, as an all-around. Okay. All right, Seth. Let's move mm. to you. Let's move to you. <laughs> oh <laughs> boy, everybody, put your seatbelts on. No, I've got. I'll be honest. I I was very very torn. Um, I grew up shooting a thirty out six. Um, around a bunch of guys that shot two seventy and seven mag. That's what was in deer camp. Were those three rifles? Um, I had a not six, so I was partial to it growing up. However, I just purchased a 7 mag to be my new deer rifle. Mm. So, that being said, I've seen more deer killed at really long ranges with the 270. So, I'm I'm very torn as to what to pick. Um, if I was going to use it for all around lowest critter being, you know, for big game being an antelope up to a moose, the one thing the 30 out six has going for it is it has probably one of the widest ranges of grain bullet you can shoot out of a gun you can shoot as low as 125 clear up to 220 um you get pretty close I, to that with I, your seven mag yeah and i think i might say i i'm coming from recency bias because i just bought a seven mag and i i really like what i see but i i haven't shot the gun or, or played with the grains to know um so to me, it's honestly a toss-up between those three rifles. But just to pick one, uh, I'll just go with what I know, which was my odd six. So why would why did you buy the seven mag? Why why wouldn't you buy a thirty odd six, a new thirty odd six? Um. So the, the one reason because he already has one. Why is he going <laughs> to buy two of the same thing? You oh, because it's a pile of different guns. Like we said at the beginning, <laughs> there's no one caliber for everything. Oh so man, but if buy I'm buying everything. if I'm buying a new gun, having a gun built right now, it's still going to be a 284 caliber. But <laughs> if if Gunworks oh. is building me a gun, guess <laughs> you, you know what caliber that gun's going to be. So 270. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what? Well, I'll get to my point on that here in just a minute as well. Yeah, so, let, let Seth finish his thoughts. So th- the biggest thing. The only reason I didn't do it, and I'll be the first one to admit, I grew up with that gun, and I don't know what happened. Apparently, as I got older, I got to be soft, but my current Aunt 6 kicks the ever-living crap out of me, and the 7 mag that I shot does not. And with a wide array of, a wide array of ammunition, I felt like I could find a bullet that would be a flatter shooting rifle. Uh-huh, uh-huh. That didn't kick as hard. Uh huh. That, uh-huh. that being said, uh huh. There's there's not that much difference in actual drop if you compare similar bullets. Okay. Okay. Instead I feel of like just I'm, going, I'm gonna get of... skipped right over. No, no, <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm, I'm coming to be, you next. It's gonna be Seth and Taryn show. <laughs> no, so what I'm saying right now is. Okay, Taryn, you you went from me over to Seth. Now, instead of just jumping right into the bait, the, to the <laughs> debate, let's go over and say, okay, Monty, now what would yours be? You and after Monty, you we'll go to you, Taryn, and then I, you hey, tell I, your piece instead of jumping in on all of us before your turn. <laughs> <laughs> How about we try that? I'll mute myself. <laughs> Monty, how do you You're feel so about the same question? Right now. <laughs> I'm kind of in the same boat as both of you. I grew up, you know, started hunting at 13 or 14. I had a Ruger. Seth, you probably know the model. I can't even remember. It's the one with the skeleton stock. Oh. Yeah, skeleton stock, stainless barrel, like a gray stock. I got it from my father, and that was the 270. So mm-hmm. I grew up hunting whitetail, antelope, mule deer. Didn't do a lot of elk hunting growing up. So 270 was my round. But since I moved to Wyoming, I wanted a little more punch. So then I bought the 7 mm. I've liked that round since then. But then you pull in the variable of the predator hunting, 
I'm obviously not shooting coyotes with a 7M or a 270. So, right. If I had to pick one round for everything that I hunt, you know, deer, antelope, predators, it's probably going to be the 243, to be honest. I but if gonna, you put the but, variable of, of moose and elk and, you know, bison someday, then a 7MM for me. But the soft spot's always been a 270 since I've been growing up, you know. 270 every hunt I've went on for 20 years. Right. So up until now, all of the answers that we have gotten, that is the best one. Because he has taken what he actually hunts and chosen what caliber would be best for what he hunts. All of us, we're thinking, okay, eventually we'll hunt moose and all this stuff that you'll never draw in your entire life. So I give Monty kudos for picking the round that would be best for him for his hunting all around. So well done, Monty. Round of applause. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> now Terry okay. will rebuttal that yeah. whole thing and make me look like crap. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've got questions for Taryn. We're going to get to the bottom of this. <laughs> oh! Are you, are you done, Monty? Should we let Taryn give his little spiel and see where he stands? <sighs> Yeah, I guess. Like I say, it's I have a lot of caliber. I think all of this, you know, for predator only, twenty two fifty. You know, for deer and antelope, two seventy. Elk, bison, seven mm. But if I had to pick one for almost all of it, two forty three. So I just gave you four of my favorite calibers. And one for big game. What's your? What is your one for big game? As in big game, as if you're talking elk. Bison, that sort of stuff. Moose, deer to moose and bison. Seven mm. Boom. Why? It's just Karen, that's that question. Said. You can cater any caliber to a question like that. <laughs> what if you're shooting competition at the range? Would you rather have a seven mm win magnum, or would you rather have a six five Creedmoor? <laughs> seven mm. Six five Creedmoor, because that's what everybody <laughs> shoots. In competition. Let's go with the amount, of day, the amount of days I predator hunt versus the amount of days I moose hunt. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. It's not even close because I don't moose hunt. I've been moose hunting once in my life. And it'll be another 10 years if I'm lucky before I draw a moose tag. Okay. Us three have given our opinions. <laughs> Taryn. <laughs> What would your opinion be? Same question. All right. So, all around. I, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with just big game because I have my all around gun as well. Um, for just big game, I'm gonna say antelope to. So are you moose. saying? <laughs> okay, sorry. What? Oh, go ahead. So anel or yeah, antelope to moose. Because I killed an antelope. Again, you're catering to your 7mm with how you're phrasing this, but we'll let you continue. <laughs> no, because... I have my all-around gun, but I'm going to stick to the big game round. No, go ahead. No, because we said we're going to do thir- we're gonna do big game, and then we'll do all-around that does everything. So, okay, big game. Because I've hunted three big game animals this year. Killed two of the three. Um killed an elk my elk didn't go anywhere when i shot it with my gun it it died immediately my antelope died immediately so my uh actually i'm gonna go back though because i do have a soft spot for a gun that i that i grew up i got it when i was a little kid was a 25 aught six so i i have a soft spot for the aught sixes um love that gun it was a lot of fun killed a lot of animals with it no offense to that gun but uh I bought a 7 mag, gosh, I don't know when it was, it's been a long time ago, I bought a Tika 7 mag, and the reason I bought the, T- the 7 mag, and I went from the 25-06, is exactly what Monty had said in his explanation, he wanted something that had a bit more punch, and the 7 mag gives you that punch, gives you a flat flying bullet, whether you're shooting long range, whether you're shooting short range, I mean, I killed, I've killed animals at 80 yards, I killed animals at 800 yards with my 7 mag. So it it is like the perfect big game gun for all different situations. Because hunting, you're always going to get different situations. And it's nice to have one gun that you can just go to. And that is, for me, is the 7 mag. Actually, and I would even say just a 284 caliber 
because it can be a 28 nozzler. Have you guys seen the 7mm saw? I haven't. I have, like, I've seen the caliber, but uh, like the bullet, but I haven't spent any time around one. Dude, it's uh, it's starting to kind of be the the big thing right now because it's kind of like a mixture of a a 708 because you can shoot a pretty good sized bullet with it, but yet with the kind of shooting style of a 65 Creedmoor or PRC, so it's kind of a cool little round. Um, a lot of the gun manufacturers are are starting to build that 7mm saw. Um, people are loving it. So, anyways. What's your questions, Seth? <laughs> okay, multifaceted, and might be might be baiting you into something here. Do it. So, why do you hate the two seventy? <laughs> okay, two seventy. <laughs> so I talked about this earlier. I think before I hit the record button. So two seventy. If you know, back in the day, my grandpa. If you guys haven't been on ehunter.com, go to ehunter.com. I, I wrote a story about a deer that my grandpa killed, a 44-inch deer, or a 44-inch mule deer. Biggest buck I've ever seen in my life. I mean, it's, it's actually gorgeous. He shot it with a 270. Back in the day, that's all people had. You know, the 270 and the 30 6 is what your grandpa shot. It's what your grandpa's grandpa shot, your dad probably shot, whatever. It's what they used to do in the, in the, the old days. Which is great. That's cool. I mean, it's cool. It makes it you know a little soft spot. But man, if you look at the data behind it, the, why would you continue shooting a 270 in today's world? There's a reason that companies like Gunworks and Fierce Firearms and all these other big firearm producing companies, they don't make custom rifles in 270 or 30 out six. You might find a 270 Winchester Short Mag. You might find that. I, I got I got a rebuttal for that. Though. Okay, what you got? What's what's the difference in today's world than it was fifty years ago? Are yeah, we I, worse hunters? We can't can't get close enough to shoot the game. No, we, we're all about performance. I mean, I you know I love a nineteen eighty six F one fifty. I mean that's a that's just a cool old truck. But I'd much rather drive my brand new F one fifty. It has so much you know it's a whole lot nicer, better fuel mileage. Blah 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 whatever. There's reasons that I don't drive a 1986 F-150. The new one is just much better. Not that I'm putting a you know bad name on the 7M. Obviously, I like it. But what do you think the effective range of the 270 is? Four, 500, 600? So looking at right your energy. Right around there? Yeah, if you're looking at energy when you're getting out there... Um, you're losing a lot of energy. You know, Seth brought up the whole drop... Point. Uh, you know, the 30 6 doesn't have a lot of drop. 270 has a lot of drop. Um, but the real problem is you're losing a lot of energy. And as you lose energy, you have a higher risk of wounding animals. And, you know, not everybody shoots long range. And I get that. Not everybody shoots turrets on their scopes. I get that as well. But if you're one of those people, you know, we, we talk with Vortex all the time and they have some really cool scopes and whatnot that have turrets on it. If you plan to shoot out there a long ways and plan to hunt at those distances i find it more ethical to carry a, a gun that has you know more energy as you get out to those distances if you look at the energy for a 270 you're dropping below a thousand i think right at around five five hundred fifty yards so really your effective range you're you're topping out there at 600 yards which i yeah i don't think anybody's saying that 270 is gonna you know, it'll be a thousand yard gun by any means. Yeah. But so how many have... people are how many people are actually gonna shoot and hunt at a thousand yards? It's a very limited amount of people. I think it's becoming more and more though. I mean with the optics that they're putting out there, everybody it's a cool thing to do now, you know, have a turret on your gun that you can shoot so many MOA, blah blah blah. I think it's becoming more popular. So I have a question circling back. So so one of your things is it's it's an old caliber, right? Your mm-hmm. grandpa had one. It's not new enough, right? Mm-hmm. It's it's old tech. Okay. So answer me a question. When was the when was the seven M M rim mag brought out? Ooh, Ooh that's a good. This does feel like Ooh, a trap. Th- this, this is a trap because like that is an a, an old caliber. But before you can <laughs> rebuttal against but. it again, but again that seven. <laughs> That 284 caliber has been evolved. So, 
And that's why I say maybe not even the 7mm. I'm just saying that that 284 caliber because the 28 Nosler, the 7mm saw. I mean, you look at the data behind those things. Uh, holy crap! I mean, you you could say the same thing for the 25 caliber. The 25 caliber has seen a lot of. I mean, really, truthfully, in metric and and standard, 25 caliber is a 6.5 mm-hmm. essentially. Yeah, it is. Basically, so you can say the same thing. I mean, 25 caliber has been around since cowboy days. Yeah, five thirty-five, all this, but they've been redesigned. The the point I'm making is the seven mm rem mag. So the rem mag was brought out in 1962. That's old. Yeah, that is old. <laughs> so, I mean, not not nothing against the guys listening that are born then, but for for tech, that's <laughs> that's old. When's when was it? Two seventy. Nineteen twenty-five. Ooh. So it's old. Twenty five. 25. Mm-hmm. But OT6 is older. 308 is older. But what I'm saying is, where does the, you draw the line between a, a, a 100 year old cartridge or a you know 50 or 60 year old cartridge? Yeah. So, the, the, the tech's still old yeah. when, when the 7 Mag came out, but it has more punch. Yeah. Yeah. Taryn which, coupled that argument with. No custom gun makers are making the 270 as mm-hmm. opposed to they are making the 7mm. But right. yeah, it right. might be for customs. But what about the the Remingtons and the Savages and the you know all of the main companies, the, the Brownings? Their X Bolt, it's awesome. They still make that in 270. It's like it's not like it's not being made right now. It is. Right. And the so, older it is, the more tested and true. Right. That so that was something I was gonna talk about is the 270 that is one thing it has going for it that none of these new things have it, it is tried and true if and again if you're not shooting over 600 yards it's a great gun really is so here's here's another thing so you were talking about drops and and different things that go along that way so obviously you can't be perfect when you're talking caliber to caliber because bullet grain is widely different in a lot of these calibers but BCs is something that I know you've brought up a lot about. Mm-hmm. And BCs w- range wildly depending on the grain of the bullet because typically a heavier bullet doesn't get moved much by the wind. And, you know, if they design it properly, it's going to carry its energy longer. But what what do you think? So a 140-grain Hornady bullet, what do you think the BCs are on a 270? A muzzle velocity BCs? Yeah. 454. So... For an STS bullet from Hornady, they're point four nine five. Damn, that's close. So, as as a reference point, a thirty out six with the same brand STS one hundred and fifty grain is only point four one five. A three hundred win mag with one hundred and eighty SST is 4.80. But again, you're so, you're talking about muzzle at, at the muzzle right, though. Right. Right. But what what I'm what I'm saying is it is very comparable or better than some of these guns at the muzzle. Obviously at the muzzle. Yeah. But that's still very comparable. Mm-hmm. Actually, the highest BC that I could come up with just through Hornady is Curtis's six point five has point six two five for hundred and forty three grams. Oh now no. Oh no, now I Curtis didn't go, <laughs> I didn't go super heavy. Like I say, I'm sure you could find a, a seven mag bullet that's similar, but just their standard middle of the pack grain. I didn't go super heavy on anything. The six point five has very high BCs from the muzzle. Yeah. And I, I agree with that. Most there's they're very comparable as, at the muzzle as far as BC. And I guess, yeah. What I mean is, once you get out there, where you're losing that energy. And I'm, I'm not a long range shooter by any means. I mean, right. Don't get me wrong. Whoever's listening to this podcast, that's not what I am saying. But I want to know and, and feel confident in it. Well, and I'll give you an example of last year on my deer hunt here in Colorado. When we first saw my deer, it was at 450 yards. 270 you're like okay that's fine 
but it, it kept running up across the mountain and my brother-in-law is yelling out ranges to me it got over five it got over 550 it got to six and then you're like uh, if you're with a 270 you're like oh do i do i make that shot and i, re- I know that there are people that think like that because i have a a friend that shoots a 270 and he's even made that comment he's like i don't in fact he was there that day he's like i don't know that i'd be pulling the trigger when it gets out there with my seven mag i don't there's it's not even a second thought i just adjust the scope and pull the trigger yeah well and to play devil at devil's advocate my cousin mm-hmm. if, if it's if it's within a thousand yards with his 270 he's taking that shot <sighs> that's what i was thinking too it's you know, and there's I, and people I, that are confident with it, anything, and if people yeah. are practicing and yeah. shooting that far and know what they can do with it, then you can use any any. Caliber. I mean, let's talk about. I mean, there's guys making ridiculously mm-hmm. long shots with a six five Creed mm-hmm. on some big critters. I mean, I've watched eight hundred yard elk shots. If you put it in the boiler room, even the you know, and and that's got very similar BCs and drop to a two seventy. Um, at least at the muzzle, and and their 500 yard drops are very similar, and and they're putting the smack down on elk size game a long ways out. Mm-hmm. So I guess it all comes down to everybody's confidence. What are you confident with? Mm, for sure. And for me, if like again, at 600 yards, if that deer's at 600 yards, and I'm I've got a 270 in my hand, I'm not pulling the trigger. I just don't trust it enough. You know, I don't have I don't think it's going to have the knockdown power that I I've got to have. Right. Well, and me personally, at 600 yards, I'm not pulling the trigger on anything, no matter what caliber. I just don't feel confident enough at 600. Mm-hmm. And I have that issue with my odd six. If it's much beyond 450, I don't have faith one in myself because I'm not a great rifle shot, and I don't have confidence in that gun to shoot that far because I don't know where to hold at that far because I don't spend enough time, you know, shocker in the world we live in, not spending enough time shooting. But, yeah, I, I don't feel confident in, in that out six at that range either. Well, see, now you have a 7 mag, put a Vortex scope on it, and hey, confidence <laughs> is there, buddy. <laughs> not, not necessarily. You might have the tools, but if, if Seth is still shooting that 7 mm mag like he is his 30 out six, he's probably still not confident at those distances. Right. Yes. Right. So, See, that's another so thing that I, yeah. I was going to say. Like, yeah, the the thirty out six, the two seventy, the seven mag are, are those guns that we've we're nostalgic about. We've we've had them forever. You know, like my seven mag, I have killed so many animals. Same with you guys and, and your guns, your thirty out six, your two seventy, whatever. And so a lot of it comes down to just that gun you're confident with. And so right. no matter what the situation, it, it's going to be you're going to you're going to be pulling the trigger. So right. But when you go back to the data, 284. <laughs> <laughs> so, but I'm right. So, so I'm right. Uh, so and, it, so. dude, I've talked to so, so many people about this. My, so my brother-in-law, he's a long-range shooter. Um, my cousin, or I guess it's his cousin. I call him my cousin. Basically, my cousin. He competes. He, I mean, he goes all over the West in, in these competitions. Um, he, su- he shoots a 7mm Ultra Mag is his gun of choice for long-range shooting. Um, and he's, he, I asked him, I said, you know, what, what's your thoughts on this? And he went on and on about this. He's like, no, nope, there's, there is no other caliber, but the seven mag you're shooting long range. But again, you're thinking, he's just thinking long range shooting and not like, uh, like you guys already said, not everybody hunts big game that way. My grandpa that shot that big buck, his way of hunting was he'd sneak around the mountains and he'd always had, you know, less than a hundred yard shots. In fact, he had a 257 Roberts that didn't even have a scope on it. Cause that's just how he hunted. But you said you pulled two long-range guys, yeah. which obviously they're going to pick the 7mm over something like the 270. Yep. However, if you pull 100 average Joe Hunters, you know, I'll guarantee it's 30 out 6 or the 270. It's the well, most popular out of 100. <laughs> Tee that up. I don't say that because I have... You in our data. <laughs> <laughs> So, Good nice lead up. Nice lead up. Um, so, would you guys like to go through some of the lesser votes first, and then we get to the top five or six? Or how would you like yeah, your just, day? 
just throw some of the you know the like crap ones away. You know, obviously people are gonna be smart asses and. Oh yeah, I threw away all the. I, I threw away all the day. real. Yeah, I threw away the real crap ones. Guys saying 50, 50 cal. Guys saying bow and arrow. We're, we're not talking archery. I like archery, but we're we're talking rifles. And obviously, did you, the guy that says a BB like gun. A five. I do. I have. I have. Start every... like at the fifth, and then count count down to the best or the most voted on. Yeah. I have every how many, caliber. How many people was there? Like we had 98, 98 votes. Oh, nice. Well, that's pretty so good. That's a, that's a like pretty it. good one. Yeah. 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 So starting with, with stuff receiving more than, like, because we had a lot of single votes, but stuff receiving more than three votes, you have. So basically, let me count. Do you have, can you do top ten? Yeah, I can do top ten. Let's do top ten, starting so at top, ten. Top 10, 10, uh, starting with 10 is, number 10 is the 300 uh, Ultra Mag. Oh, that makes you want to say hurt. how you word it, the question? Oh, sure. So, I ask simply, we are looking for your help with the next podcast. Um, and it says, let me actually read it so I'm not lying to you. <laughs> yeah, we don't want lies here, Seth. Yeah, I gotta, I gotta do it exactly. The, the two seventy guy. Yeah. <laughs> so, it says we'd love to hear your vote for our podcast. If you could only have one rifle caliber to hunt with, what would it be? So that being said, the majority of where I shared this poll was on big game social media, big game pages on social media. So you're not gonna get as many guys going light, you know, just because they're not shooting coyotes or that sort of thing. So, top 10, obviously, 10 is Ultra, 300 Ultra Mag. Uh, number 9 is 28 Nosler. Can you give the numbers behind these? Yeah, so, so those two both had equal votes, two votes for each one. Since the 300 actually kind of surprises me on that. The 28 doesn't surprise me because not a lot of people shoot it, use it, have even looked into it. Um, that is that is the Ultra. So there's a number of 300s in this list, but the Ultra Mag got Oh, two. okay. So then going to number 7, you have the 300. Eight. What's it? Oh, 8? I what thought I... Oh, eight? yeah, you're, you're yep. 8. Sorry. 300 Winchester Short Mag okay. with three votes. Um, from there... Number seven is, and they're kind of tied, but the 6.5 Creedmoor, three votes. Um, six is a 6.5 PRC with five votes. Five is the 308 with seven votes. Four is the 300 win with 15 votes. Three... Oh, don't get upset, Taryn. Three is the 7mm mag. <laughs> Eight, 18 votes. Pause. Pause for Taryn to blow up a little bit. Um, I'll just do it. So on our normal calls, I'll just do what Monty does. He just also just disappears and mutes. I'm just going to disappear and mute and just say the thing so I don't have to go back and beep out my my words. No, um, I'm good. So yeah, three was 7mm, uh, 18 and 18 votes. Two was the 30 out six with 19. And number Holy one, number 270. Way. 270 Holy with way. 20 votes. Holy wow. Man. Wow, that's that crazy. That surprises me. That does surprise me. Yeah, that's surprising. Yep. And, and that being said, the majority of where I shared these were Utah, Colorado, Wyoming. Big game pages. So that's yeah, I think yeah, those numbers would change if you started doing you know long range groups oh, yeah. and that sort of stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if you went back east and asked a bunch of guys from Missouri to West Virginia, you're going to get a whole different stack of guns too. The thirty thirty is going to climb a ton. Yep, I can't believe the thirty thirty wasn't involved yeah. somehow. See, I love 350, my thirty thirty. Three fifty legend, that new caliber probably would get some traction. I mean, a bunch of close range stuff would would get traction as you moved further east or north, um, stuff like that. The Western big game. That's your that's your voice of opinion right there. Western big game. Hmm. 
Um, some of the unique ones, I guess they're not unique, but low, low receiving boats. Um, seven Sherman Max. Uh, Whoa. Seven MM STW. Um, seven MM Weatherby. Twenty-five out six. Three hundred. Did I miss the two forty-three? It it did not get a vote. Two forty-three didn't need a vote. Wow. <laughs> nope. Did not get a vote. How many of you guys own a 243? I know, Monty, you do, right? I own a few of them, yeah. Do you, Seth, Curtis, do you guys own a 243? I don't. I do my not. cousin my cousin has two, one for his kid and one for his wife, but I don't own any. Oh. My brother owns one. I think the same as Monty's um, little Ruger that he has, but, yeah, his, <laughs> his young sons, they've used it for deer and stuff like that. Interesting. I don't know one either. Uh, my father-in-law does. It's actually, no, it's a 243 short mag, which is actually kind of a cool bullet. If you guys haven't seen that bullet, that's a cool one to look up. Super short? It's super short. It's it, it's so no, short and fat. Super short? Oh, it might be a super short because it's, it's super short and fat. Yeah, so it's the WSSM, right? Yes. 243. Yep. Yep, super that's what short mag. Yeah. yeah. It's a cool little yeah. gun. I'm not gonna lie. I had to look up what a Sherman Max was. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I, I'm not. I don't know what that is either. Yeah, to to either. seven no. mm in a really weird case. I'll be. I'll admit my ignorance. I had no idea what that was. So uh, that's funny. Seven oh eight make the list. No, no, it didn't. Uh, that's my wife's gun. Is a seven oh eight. She's. I watched her smack deer with that thing. I had a Six, bunch five. of people commenting. 25 watt six and that kind of stuff. Yeah, 6.5, 284 made it. Mm. Just one, but. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah, I would have never thought that those numbers would be that way. But again, that's, you know, it's probably going back to what people just flat out use. And our dads gave us 270s and aught sixes. Right. So that's you know, I, what you continue and I to use. Stuff, so why change, right? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> interesting so what about an all around gun like forget about big game if you're going to have something that you're just going to use for hunting obviously Monty still sticking with the 243 yep just because I I shoot more coyotes than I do you know elk and stuff uh huh so 243 for me have you shot a deer with your 243 I have yes and antelope that is actually my go to gun is a 243 for antelope Interesting, Curtis. What about and you? I bought the wife. Oh, sorry. 243. 243 just because a low rico for the wife for yeah. antelope hunting. They really don't have any recoil at all, do they? They're pretty minimal. No, I don't think I put my eight year old on it right away. You know, she's shooting the 223 right now, but I think there's quite the jump from the 223 to 243 for in terms of recoil for a kid. Uh huh. Curtis, how about you? What's your uh, what's your go to all around caliber? I I oh I know I don't know. I think right now I'm I'm pretty solid on this six five PRC. I'm pretty impressed after this year. Um, I got I've been shooting it quite a bit and half in it, and then taking those two animals, you know, nope. antelope up to an elk. I <laughs> what. <laughs> I said no two four with all the foxes you've been shooting. Yeah, that's was, seventeen. I was just gonna say that. How does that do on a freaking gray fox? <laughs> yeah, it will not be there anymore. Well, if I had to do what I'm hunting most here, I'd do a seventeen HMR and call it good. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's gonna kill me. No antelope or elk though, so that might Heck. be tough. Dude, and hit him in the head. <laughs> but yeah. it goes back to how often that. are you hunting antelope and elk in Arizona? Not very often, I doubt it. Yeah. No, but I mean, every Mark it down, year I'm Curtis. hunting big game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Freaking Curtis is shooting elk every year, so that's what I said from the beginning. There's, there's no. There's no right answer to this. Well, that's the There's point no of no universal gun. There's too many variables. Yeah, that's the point of the shooting the bull podcast. There is no answer to this yeah. question. Yeah. This is just yeah. to these questions. Arguing. Yeah. 
<laughs> All right, Seth. What about you? What's your What's your gun? Uh, as little as I shoot elk and big stuff, and uh, as little as I shoot coyotes because I just don't. I, I do when I see them, but I don't go hunt them. Um, I would probably pick something lighter, like a twenty-five out six or a two fifty-seven. We didn't even talk about two fifty sevens. Where are you pulling this caliber at? You didn't mention it at all. A two fifty seven Weatherby. Yeah, I know. Well, we know what it is, but you didn't mention it. Well, I, I just saying for lighter stuff because I, you know, I don't need the punch of a, a seven mag on antelope and and deer, which is basically what I'm hunting. Seven mag will kill a deer just fine, but if I wanted to shoot coyotes with the same gun as I'm shooting deer with, I. I'd probably do one of those or a or twenty five out six, one of those two. I think he said two seventy and that's when the pissing match started, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I just have to stand up for my family, all right? There's a lot of two seventy shooters in the family, and if I didn't I would be disowned. Oh, give give them my apologies. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry that they have to shoot two seventies. <laughs> Uh, well, my all-around caliber round is a really odd one, but I I freaking love this gun. That's a 240 Weatherby. That gun, I've watched that gun kill coyotes, elk, deer. I mean, really everything. Weatherby makes a pretty cool. I mean, I know we just talked about the 257, but Weatherby makes a pretty dang cool bullet, regardless of what caliber you're shooting it in and. Man, that 240, it, it carries a punch. I don't know if you guys have looked at the data on it, but the ballistics on it, the energy that it carries out there, it's, it's pretty impressive. So that would be my all-around gun. That's another variable. You know, you got to take a loan out to buy Weatherby ammo if you're in a factory. <laughs> yeah. 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 Bucks and bars will two... make you broke in a hurry. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Whereas my 243, I think I can still buy the federal blue boxes for 20, 25 bucks, you know? Yeah. Some Remy four locks for 18 99 <laughs> Weatherby, 240 Weatherby I have, no, I have no idea what that even is but it's probably $60, $70 a box isn't it? When I looked at the yeah, 7mm, just for the brass Yeah, the 7mm ones were 80 bucks a box the other yeah. day when I saw the 7mm Weatherby Yeah, they are that is the bad thing about Weatherby they are extremely expensive to to reload to buy bullets for whatever you're doing with them, and it's and it's sure. tough to find. That's see, that's yeah, another variable. It's easier to find bullets for the 270, the some of these more popular calibers than it is 240. Not that's right. an argument that's, that's been around <laughs> forever. Is if say you know you lose your ammo on a trip, you're gonna go to a mom and pop show, you know a store. What are they gonna have? Are they odd gonna six. have a 240? <laughs> They're gonna have the odd six, a 270, a 243. Yeah. That's probably the three calibers they carry. But. See, I'm so I'm so anal about bullets now, though. That like, so I, I do all my own reloading, and like I'm getting so funny about it. Like, it's got to be the same brass. It's got to be the same primer. It's got to, you know, everything has got to be the same on it. So <coughs> if I lose bullets, I'm sure. probably not gonna go to the mom and pop shop and buy it anyways. But I mean, what but if you're like, say you're traveling to Wyoming and you get your trucks broke into, are you just going to cancel your hunt? Or I'm going to gonna... call my wife and say, "Hey, overnight, me a box of bullets are downstairs in the <laughs> send them to one five four Laramie, Wyoming." <laughs> yep, exactly. That's that's how it's going to go. <laughs> Shoot. I say the bad thing is we're kind of arguing semantics because you can't find bullets for anything right now. That's true. Oh, that's very true. I was in Bass Pro today. <laughs> Actually, do you know what? Bass Pro had a ton of uh, 223s today. Really? But, yeah. See, actually, it's probably the opposite of the argument I just made. It's probably the odd calibers that the yeah. mom and pops have right now. Yeah, that's the, a good point. My local sporting goods store here, it, if you wanted to buy a gun and be able to get bullets right now, the only two calibers I see there consistently every time I go is 25 out six and 280 rim. Really? Those Weird. they've got stacks of them. Everything else, dude. Freaking dust bunnies on the shelf. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
kind of kicking my butt for getting rid of my 25 lot six then <laughs> at least in utah man there's a freaking stack at the local store i say that now and yeah that, and there won't be anything left i was gonna say don't tell anybody where that local store is at because yeah, and yeah. i'm not going to tell anybody where my i guess everybody knows where my local bass pro is at but <laughs> they're gone by now i'm sure yeah yeah all right let me ask you one more question hey, before we you guys oh go yeah, ahead go ahead no go ahead curtis no, i was just gonna ask if if you guys um got a good comment from anyone on your polls i got a few good comments that would probably be good to if yeah, you want to do that <clears throat> i can pull some of mine too go ahead with yours so one guy that yeah one one guy that i agree with a lot on this comment um his name is cristobal marco so he um i posted this in the ruger precision rifle so more of kind of a competition shooting um atmosphere uh, but this is what he says, and it was pretty good. It is debating over the best dog or the best hammer. Everything is a tool. In my mind, any great 30 cal is a great round. In Africa, the 375 is very popular. Everyone has their opinion. There is no best all around, or we would only have one or two. They are just tools. Long range mid cal, 6.5 is great right now. Long range, 300 wind mag. Harder hitting. Uh, 375 or Ruger. Then he says the 308 is a great round, but not as versatile as the 30 at 6. Ultimately, they are just tools in a toolbox. If I had only one for survival, uh, Seth, I would personally go with the 30 at 6, just my two cents. But it's really like debating which supercar is the best or which truck is the best in Texas. <laughs> <laughs> so he, he summed it up pretty good right there. <laughs> But I got a bunch of good good comments from people that really get into this. But it's like like he said, it's different variables. Are you hunting in Africa? Are you hunting, you know, oh, coyotes got, in Wyoming? I've got one. You brought up Africa, and I got one that'll trigger Taryn even more. Oh boy, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> well, my stepdad traveled to Africa about ten years ago. Won won the hunt at a oh. I think it was a Turkey Federation thing, like a raffle. Um, and when he got there, the PH said, you know, what rifle did you bring? He says, my 270. And by the way, he shoots a Ruger number one. So not even a bolt action. It, it shoots one bullet. And you got to load one bullet at a time. And the PH is like, uh, we'd prefer you to shoot a 375. And my stepdad says, no, I'm going to shoot my 270. And... He says, no, you just don't understand. Uh, the big game here doesn't just fall over dead like America. They run off. You have to shoot them with the 375. And he's like, no, I'm paying for the hunt. I'm going to shoot my gun. So after arguing, they let him shoot his gun. Because how many planes game that he shot that ran away? Zero. Zero. <laughs> <laughs> he shot two kudus, a gemsbok, uh, two different kinds of wildebeest, two impalas, uh, a springbok, a diker. They literally wanted him to shoot a diker, which is like an animal the size of a cat with a 375. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> Was there anything yeah, left it, of that, even with the 270? Yeah, he said there it wasn't too bad with the 270, but he's like, dude, I couldn't imagine hitting it with a 375. He's like, I, you wouldn't have gotten anything out of it. See, that works out well. You kill it and you gut it all at the same time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, they were all adamant that his 270 couldn't do it, and every one of them critters fell over dead. So, coyote. <laughs> coyote. <laughs> I'll just help you out, Terrence. So you can... <laughs> Not your square uh, work. Uh, <laughs> uh, see, look, the two podcasts in a row, I'm right. I love this. <laughs> oh, uh, I got one more for my Creedmoor peeps out there, and then Taryn, you can finish this off with your thought. Um, so Creedmoor hits hardest for its weight and has bullets that are more accurate um, than any other caliber. Long range precision shooters will choose 6.5 a lot of the time, and short range hunters have a larger selection of bullets for any condition. It's easy to shoot and reload for, so that's another thing economic to you know buy the ammo or reload lo loading products. 
And then he says, if you want to pick a mite off a flea's back at a thousand yards, the six five will do just that. <laughs> All right, Curtis. Now you got a challenge. Club. You gotta you gotta live up to. You gotta shoot a mite off a flea's back at a thousand yards. That was yep. Carl Casso. So thanks for that, man. I think you Carl were trying hit. to do that with that antelope in Wyoming, weren't you? You really <laughs> hit that damn thing. <laughs> was, you barely yeah. hit it to the top of the back. <laughs> Ticks on its spine. Got to watch you must that. Have seen it. I was going for that. Tick. You must have seen that. Up there. Might. <laughs> Those vortex that optics, story. man. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I had one I thought was interesting. Just I don't know why he said it. He didn't give, feed into it much, but it was Richard Butman said, "I use a 28 nozzler and a 6.5 Creed most of the time nowadays. But if I could only have one to hunt multiple animals, I would pick a 30 odd six. Yeah, so that was what that other guy of mine said, too. Do you know, I think my favorite comment that you got on your post, Seth, was uh, from Levi Baum. My 30 6 that my grandpa gave me from World War Two. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> an M1 grand. <laughs> uh, that's funny. Yeah, so I actually got a lot of comments like this, guys, too. Um you know, pros for the six five, just because it it is uh, low recoil. You know, this kind of rang true with me having you know starting to have kids and stuff like that, getting into the sport. Um, I've shot and used nearly er- every caliber there is, and when I shoot a six five, I think this is what I want my sons to learn to shoot on. Talk about a confidence boost on a shooting range for someone learning to shoot flat, long range, and low recoil. So those are all pros for that too. And then and he says this, which is totally true, which we believe, which has nothing to do with caliber or anything. He says, if the future of hunting and sports depends on our sons and daughters getting exciting, excited about the sport, we got to get them out there shooting, which right. is true. Conservation right there. I agree on that. Yep. 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 Absolutely. Well, it's just cool that we can all have differing opinions and you can put it out there on social media and people, we, we joke and and missing matches and whatever you know we're all the hunters and shooters and um want to make the sport better so it's cool that you can interact and you can disagree like we do with Taryn almost all the time but yeah yeah they do common ground as well so yeah we have pissing matches all the time when he's wrong yeah (laughs) it's nice always be and it's nice always being right is what it is seth golly Uh, (laughs) you would really the bottom feeling Bottom line here is, and I think what I've learned tonight is, we need to have a wide array of guns. And so for the <laughs> wives that are True. listening to this podcast, just know that that's the reason why your husband needs a bunch of guns. It's just that's how hunting is. We need a lot, right? Yes. When you, <laughs> when you start showing guns off and someone says, how many do you have after like the third or fourth one? You got to just keep pulling them out at that Oh, point. yeah. 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 <laughs> That's like one of the favorite pastimes when yeah. I living here in Colorado, I don't live around many hunters and so when they want to see my guns and I pull one out and then I pull another one out and then I pull another they're like holy cow, how many guns do you have to have? <laughs> a lot. <laughs> a lot. There's a lot. <laughs> I always just say one more caliber and then I'm done. I got everything I need. So that's been going on for 15 years now. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so since we're, we've kind of covered for everything and then big game, you guys want to hit small game just for the fun of it, varmints and stuff, since we've hit kind of a middle ground, the big game gun. And then since Taryn posted the coyote one on Instagram, what? You heard. What's yes. He yes. <laughs> that was yeah. fan freaking. You were on my team last time. Uh, I'm still on your team. It's a coyote. I just had to appease Taryn because he feel like he's okay. gonna cry a little no, bit about his No, no, you did it. You I did it. He actually just did it. He didn't he know did. he did it. He did. Come on. I've not said it one time other than that. It's all coyote all the time. <laughs> I think, Seth, a lot of us would agree on this same caliber, which is probably my go-to uh, best all-around for this kind of stuff is the twenty-two two fifty. Second, third. I think that's well, yeah. I think that's where I'd be. That's the that's the gun right there. <laughs> yep. 
It really but is. But even that, even even that though, Taryn is too big for the foxes down here. I had that one video you can see on our YouTube page. I was using the twenty two two fifty, and they were coming in so close that it it did too much. Um, oh yeah, so you made a mess 17, of that one, didn't you? Yeah, that's that's yeah. where the seventeen HMR comes into play on those guys as with that thin skin they got. I'll put a two oh four in your guys' hand and put you on a prairie dog town and that would be your favorite predator round. <laughs> varmint round. Dude, see, see ever since seven? you've taught me about that round, I've I've wanted to get it. So oh, yeah, man. I do want to try that. Two oh four is a slick gun. My my one oh. buddy has one. It's a slick gun. To see the prairie dogs go, you know, two feet in the air and still see it in your scope is incredible. Because <laughs> even with the twenty two two fifty, you're still gonna lose the sight, you know, in the yeah. scope. Yep. But with yeah. the two hundred four, it's just like, you know, it isn't much more than a twenty two for a recoil, you know. Yeah. yeah. See, that's why I like the seventeen. Yeah, seventeen. Remington yeah. or Hummer. The the HMR. I love that seventeen HMR for prairie dogs. All those things, those little ones. Anything within about 250, it's a freaking hoot. <laughs> With the little 17, too. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yep. I've killed, I've killed more coyotes with my 17 than my 250. <laughs> really? Yeah, I don't, I don't coyote hunt. Cut your own. That's, That's right. <laughs> I'm duck hunting, usually, and I have the 17 in the back seat. Oh. So. <laughs> All right. Well, should we uh, should we wrap it up then? Since I we we definitely found out that I'm right in all these situations, so <laughs> this will be a reoccurring theme on every podcast. Yes. Oh, yeah. Everybody yeah. prepare. Sir is right. Yes. See, I tell my wife that all the time. The quicker she learns <laughs> that, the happier everybody will be. Mm, but yeah. Good luck. Uh, uh, um... <laughs> <laughs> well, guys. Thanks for listening. Um, hit us up. Let us know what your guys' favorite calibers are, What, depending on what you're hunting. Let us know what you hunt most and what gun you use. be interesting. Like, we did these polls, and that was a lot of fun. But uh, following the podcast, leave us a comment. Let us know your thoughts on, on all this. So, you guys got anything else to add? No. Good podcast. Yeah. That was fun. All right, guys. We'll chat with you all later. Yep. Thanks, guys. All right, everybody, thanks for listening to the podcast. Don't forget to leave a comment below. Let us know what you think the best caliber is for big game, for all-around hunting, uh, small game. Whatever it is you hunt, let us know what caliber you think is the best. Thanks, guys. Appreciate your support.